Hey YouTube, this is my latest toy uh, I purchased on Craigslist. Uh, I got it over the weekend. Uh, this couple had won it in some type of silent auction that they were bid, uh, bidding on. Uh, the guy owned some big company. I didn't even ask what it was, but you know the house that they lived in was multi-million dollar house, and it's crazy ridiculous. But uh, they had posted this uh, this kayak on uh, Craigslist, and uh, I picked it up uh, for four hundred dollars. Um, it's a few years old. Uh, I think they kept it outside, but for the most part, you know, it was in really, really good shape. It was in the in the woods where uh, it got a lot of shade, so it didn't get too discolored. But uh, it's a Stealth 2000. You know, it's basically a uh, duck hunting uh, kayak, uh, or rather, I say boat. This thing is huge. It's 12 foot. Uh, long and it's really 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 wide in fact uh, I've got a tape measure right here I can tell you just how wide this thing is just uh, we're gonna measure from the side side to side and the widest part uh, looks to be around right at 39 inches now if you go to the edge of the outside of the boat right here uh, it's gonna be a lot probably about four or five inches wider but uh, the boat is built like a tank I mean my wife's got uh, a kayak in here it's the uh, it's the uh, perception access 11.5 and it weighs a, about probably 60 pounds, uh, give or take a few pounds. Uh, and uh, I think it's built pretty sturdy until I pick this beast up. And, uh, you know, this thing's only six inches longer, but uh, it weighs 120 pounds dry. Uh, that's with nothing in it. I mean, 120 pounds. So that tells you, uh, I know it's wider, so it's going to weigh more, but uh double what that other one weighs that lets you know that it's it's built really strong uh one thing i do like about it is uh on the front here it's got a place for your dog to uh stand or lay down or whatever uh it's just a a cloth uh type of material where you know i'm sure you know he can jump off that or get on that easier than what he can just trying to jump off this slick plastic uh it's got uh two places for shotguns one on each side um uh let's get to see it's got a big handle to carry it on the front and one on the very back uh, it does have a drain plug here in the very front um and uh Let's see, it's uh, got a nice seat in it. It folds down for storage, and then you can flip it up. And uh, I, know, I know most people are thinking, well, yeah, that's a, the battery box for the trolling motor, because yes, there is a, a trolling motor attachment that goes in right here, and then it comes off, and you can mount up to like a two horsepower motor, a, a gas motor on it or a uh, trolling motor. Well, you can do the same thing for the other side. Uh, you can put the, the motor on either side, it looks like. But uh, like I said, here in the middle, a lot of people were using that for a battery box. Well, whenever you're trying to paddle a kayak this heavy, um, and a lot of the weight's in the back because you're sitting right there on top of the seat and then you're gonna turn around and put a 50, 60 pound battery in it and then you got a big dry storage bin back here and then you got your cup holders. By the time you put all the weight here in the back, it don't paddle very good. So uh, if it was me, I would take and I would relocate and put the battery up here in the front to help distribute some of the weight to the front and uh, I would take 
And I would use this as a cooler. Instead of putting a cooler in the back or, or somewhere else, hell, I would just use that right there as a cooler. If you look at that, that is a, it's, it looks like a double wall. I mean, there's a wall there, and then there's a wall on the inside right there. Uh, and it's shaded because of the seat. Now, I know what you're going to say. Well, that's just thin wall there at the top. Well, it wouldn't take much to take and put a piece of insulation or something over the top of that and then close it up. And well, damn, you got your a poor man's Yeti cooler. I mean, shit, you could, <laughs> you could pack your at least a six pack and a couple sandwiches in there and you're good for the day. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you got your... You know, uh, a couple of holders for some drinks right there. And then, like I said, you got a whole dry storage back here. Well, we're talking, these people were generous with the storage on this boat. Uh, it's pretty deep. Uh, let me measure it right quick. Let me grab my trusty Harbor Freight tape measure that cost the whole free. <laughs> got like 500 of them. Anyways, uh, let's see. It's about 11 inches deep here, closest to the back of the seat. And it slopes down, and then it goes up towards the back. And at the back, it looks like it's still about six and a half inches. But, uh, yeah, you're, you'd be able to store a lot of stuff in there. You know, you could put a, a life vest in there real easy and fishing stuff. And, uh you know but uh the one thing that i do not like about this kayak other than you know the all the weight being up under the seat uh is in order to paddle something this wide and this tall a regular old paddle just won't work uh the, this is my wife's uh, paddle here for her uh, her kayak, and I'll measure it for you. It's a No Limits brand. Well, actually, it should tell the weight right here. Still got the tag on it. Uh, it's 94 inches, and uh, we paid like 40 bucks for this thing or less. It wasn't very much. And uh, anyways, it's a pretty decent paddle. I mean, you're not gonna. You're not doing professional kayaking here. You're just paddling around fishing. But uh, 94 inches is, is just not enough. They recommend with this kayak, according to their website, and you can go check after me, they recommend a nine foot paddle. Well, folks, I've looked at Dick's Sporting Goods. I've looked at Academy. I've looked uh, online and yeah, they sell their brand paddle and I see a few other companies selling paddles. But by the time you get it shipped and, you know, uh, pay shipping on it and, you know, get it to your doorstep, you're going to pay $100 or more for the cheapest paddle. And if it breaks, you're probably not going to get it warrantied and this, that, and the other. Well, anyways, long story short, I took my wife's paddle and, you know, I'll just buy her another one uh, today and I got to looking at it. And I was like, you know, it comes apart there in the middle. And uh, so that gave me an idea. My idea was this. The other day when I purchased the kayak, the people were being very cheap. Surprise, surprise. And they give me this broken Future Beach paddle with a broken handle. Well, I'm sorry, that broken handle had a little bit more to it. It was uh, actually had this piece here that I cut off of it and uh, I uh, made an extender, a paddle extender. Let me show you. This is my wife's kayak here in the front. So I'm going to take it apart for you. Let me set my camera down. Just a second. I'm going to take it apart. I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but I'm just going to quickly take it apart. Okay? Well, 
I took her paddle apart and I took that broken paddle and there's a spot on that old paddle where it dropped down uh, the tubing you know stepped down a little bit right here and then there was a little button to hold it in place and then on the other end I cut it I just cut it off there was no hole there so I took and I figured out where I wanted my paddle placement to be and I thought well I'll drill a hole out so I did I drilled the hole out I drilled small so there wouldn't be any slop in the in the paddle when I put it together so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to put it together one-handed and show you folks I don't know if you can see this but Sorry about the rough video. There we go. The, I've got the button to click it in place, as you can see. And it was a little tight, so I just took a little rat tail file. Went over to my toolbox and, and took a little rat tail file. I've got a bunch of these. They're used for sharpening uh, chainsaws or, you know, just uh, cleaning holes up or whatever. And uh, I took that little file and made that hole a little bit bigger so that it would uh, work with this uh, little paddle extender I made and uh, on the other side of her paddle uh, I didn't have to really modify anything all but one of the holes I had to take it and use that rat tail file again and make that hole a little bit bigger and then now I can take her original paddle and then right there's the Right there where my thumb is, is where the paddle extender that I made is. And then, set her paddle up here. And I'm going to connect the two. Let's see. It's hard to do one-handed. Okay. Let me set the camera down just for a second. And voila, folks. Now, instead of going out and paying a hundred bucks for a nine foot paddle, I took and I made my own. And there's no slop in it. I made sure that I got uh, the holes the perfect size and I measured and the paddle is exactly nine foot. And you can see where, you know, that little paddle extender is there. And even though I put that paddle extender in there, I can still take that paddle extender out and my wife can still connect it like it was originally. And it still works the same as the original size so if she wants to use it just take the extender out when i'm using it put the extender in and now we have you know it goes from a uh a 94 inch paddle all the way up to a nine foot paddle and uh that thing that you see on there is just a disconnect for the rod leash that i have on her paddle so she don't lose it but uh anyways there you go folks uh i was able to take a, a cheap paddle and and uh, save me 40 bucks I mean uh, basically a hundred bucks because uh, I didn't have to go buy a specialty one but uh, other than that uh, requiring a longer paddle uh, I think the boat is looks really well I think four hundred dollars was a steal uh, it looks very very stable uh, I'll try to flip the boat up on its side and let you see I will tell you that this joker is heavy there's a there's the back of the boat and here's the here's the front basically the design of this boat is basically flat in the middle 
and a pontoon on each side. It's built just like a pontoon boat. Uh, so I have not been out in it yet. I've not put it on the water, but I have filled it up with water and cleaned it out. And I didn't see any leaks when I put water in it. So hopefully it don't leak when I get in it. The people were kind enough. They did tell me uh, that I could try it out, uh, but I can't swim. And that's the reason why I got such a big boat. And I, I am a big guy. I'm six foot one, uh, 310 pounds. Uh, so, you know, the weight limit on this boat uh, says, uh, I'll let you read it. It says 552, oh, two, two persons or 450 pounds, 552 pounds, persons, motor, gear, two horsepower motor maximum. So, you know, it'll hold quite a bit of weight. So with my big butt in there, 300 pounds, and you know, I've still got, you know, 150 pounds of gear I could put in here. Probably what I'm gonna do is just take a small, uh, tackle box and and uh put me some food up underneath my seat and put my dog on the front i've got a nice little lab who loves to be in the water she chases those tennis balls like crazy and and uh i can't wait for me and my wife this weekend to go out fishing so uh, pick yourself up a, a stealth 2000 uh if anybody shows any interest on this boat uh, I'll, uh, post some videos of how, how this boat operates with me in it and how, how it paddles and tracks in the water and how, uh, how good job this boat does. And, uh, I appreciate it, YouTube, and I'll see you guys later.